for gd attitude. What you need is, you need a optimal estimation or let me call it state estimation algorithms algorithm for uh, estimating the attitude and <coughs> angular range. So here, so you're going to use something called, again this is an option, but uh, look at an extended common filter. You can look at this extended common filter, use this to integrate the uh, the sun sensor, magnetometer and gyros, the output is attitude and angular rates. This is essentially like at least square, you, you can, you are trying to minimize the error and get the, uh, get the state of a system. You understand what the state of a system is? <coughs> So you understand, uh, remember what I told about mathematical model? What's a mathematical model? What does it relate? Input and output. It relates input output. Mathematical model is nothing but input output relationship. Now, <clears throat> what is the state of a system? The values of the different parameters. Yes, so for example, can one system have two mathematical models? Yes, yes, sir. It depends on what state you're trying to you're yes. trying to extract out extract as the output, right? For example, a satellite will have a translational mathematical model given the so that will give the what are the translational states? Translational motion states. Position, velocity, acceleration. Okay. So it could also have rotational states, which are <coughs> angle, <coughs> angular rate, angular <coughs> acceleration. So when you do this, uh, when you're estimating, you're not as interested in estimating the translational dynamics as the rotational dynamics. So attitude is all about rotational dynamics. Okay, when you do attitude, you have to look, you have to focus on the attitude is nothing but the relative orientation. The equivalent for translational would be relative position. Okay, so you you are trying to estimate the attitude and the angular rates, and you're going to fuse these this these uh, this map, the sensors, the models, all of that will be fused in this to figure out and estimate the spacecraft attitude and angular rates and you look at something like an extended Kalman filter okay uh, this again could be a simple project so here I'm going to write the third task as design of an optimal estimator for estimating the attitude of attitude and A 
similar to this, uh, you could, this state estimation, you can also employ a state estimation algorithm. for estimating the orbit position okay what are we doing what are how are we getting the orbit position gps gps, GPS right so the, what is the limitation of a gps for let's say for ground based system what is the limitation of a gps for ground based systems, what is the limitation of GPS? Is there a limitation? Accuracy. Limitation, um, not ac in the sense of accuracy, but. Uh, height. Hmm? Height. Height. Antenna size. For, for ground based systems, do you need a uh, big antenna for GPS receiver? Yes. Do your cell phones have GPS receiver? Yes. You don't need a big antenna. What, do you, what is the limitation? Not necessary. So you can have a have a GPS unit by itself. For example, all the garments. It's if you look at uh, these garment receivers, which are in, inside a car and all. Yeah. But what what is when, when I ask where, what I'm trying to get is where does the GPS work and where does it not? Where does the GPS not work? Huh? Indoors it doesn't. Will the GPS work here? It won't work indoors. Okay. So if you're going in a tunnel, right? The GPS will not work. But the the position, will the satellite, will the GPS system on your cell phone still keep telling you how you have progressed? So you use accelerometers to complement the GPS data. However, when you are when you're in space, is there a limitation? You are always, right? But the limitation in the sense of uh, power. GPS receiver, have you tried to switch on the GPS receiver on your cell phone all the time? It will drain. It will drain battery very, very quickly. Right? So what we need to do, need to understand is if we, if we employ a GPS receiver on board a satellite, it's going to drain the power very rapidly. Okay. So we have to complement the GPS data with a Orbit propagator. Okay. You could do duty cycle GPS. Let's say you sample GPS every minute. Okay, and that's what we are going to do. In within those minutes, you you know how much a satellite will travel in a minute? <coughs> in a minute, uh -huh. per second, it will be more than twenty-four Not uh, it will travel at around eight kilometers per second. So eight six huh? 42, 420 kilometers, it would have traveled 420 kilometers in a minute. So if you, you, you cannot, you don't want to sample it every 420 kilometers, right? You want to sample it a little more than that. So between those two points, what you could do is, you could use a orbit propagation model. Accelerometers don't work in space. If you are free falling, okay? And you have a weighing machine under in, under your feet. Zero. So there has to be a. How does a weighing machine work? Gravity. When you're falling, there's no gravity. Reaction force. The reaction force. When you do this, the weighing machine. There is a reaction. This thing which will tell you the the weight. Okay. So that reaction force is missing in space. So accelerometers are of no use unless there is a reaction. 
So the gravity itself cannot be measured using accelerometers. So you cannot measure the the linear. Uh, you cannot propagate. It is just the design. The design will not allow you to use accelerometers as uh, uh, position propagating sensors. So you have to use an orbit propagation model. And uh, I want you to look at this orbit propagation model. There are mathematical models uh, which can be used to uh, complement the GPS data or supplement the GPS data so that we can continuously get orbit position even when the GPS is being duty cycled. Okay, you understand? So you every minute you do it, every 10 seconds you do it, but between those 10 seconds you still need data. You use maths for triggering. Yes, you use math for triggering, triggering out, uh, for figuring out what is. You can use a very simple mathematical model to propagate between those two. So typically, what we do is. If we do, if we cannot accommodate a GPS on board a satellite, we actually simply have this orbit propagator model, and every time it's it's uh, it comes by, we tell the position. So we tell it, this is your position. Now start propagating. That initial value it needs it needs that initial value, right? It can propagate, but it needs some initial value. You understand the distance between propagation and determination? Determination is absolute in the sense uh, GPS is determination. Okay, so you have it gives you the absolute value with respect to the Earth's this thing. Okay, but propagation is it will give you incremental. So you need that initial value to propagate something. So when the satellite, if you have an orbit propagation model on, on board your satellite, whenever it comes over, you just tell it what is its position, it will keep on propagating. Okay. There are obvious limitations with this, because this is a mathematical model, can you do calculus on a computer? No sir, on electronics, huh? using electronics. You can do calculus? Huh? Calculus, you can do calculus? I don't think you can do calculus. Integration. Integration, can you do integration? Yes, sir. You cannot really do integration, you can do numerical integration. Using constant constants. So, integration, you cannot really do any kind of uh, calculus using any computers. Can computers do math? What can computers do? Computers can do arithmetic. Arithmetic, right? Can a computer do math? Can a computer do logic? Yes. You, you're believed to do. You believed. You're made to believe that computers can do logic. Okay. But let's say computers can do logic. But computers cannot really do math as such. So when you implement the this orbit propagation, you have a limitation with regards to what is the so how do you how do you uh, you implement some kind of arithmetic series or algebraic series to do your integration do your uh, this thing right in your computers. So when you do that, you realize that this these arithmetic series or algebraic series they are infinite right but can you do infinite in, in a computer so we have to approximate you cut the higher order terms so the the amount of higher order terms will depending on how many higher order terms you can accommodate there is going to be a error and that error is going to propagate propagate compound so you have when you do pure orbit propagation you cannot sustain that and that is the reason we have something like a GPS to tell it, okay, now this is your absolute value. Now propagate for, so you can only uh, afford an error for let's say a minute. After that it's too much, so you reset it. Then again for a minute it will propagate. 
So this is another task. Uh, I'm going to capture the easiest task. I'm, I'm, I'm discussing and identifying tasks at the same time, okay? So you have, again you can look at, look at an optimal estimation for orbit determination and So whoever is going to take up this, I would I would urge them to. So one of you can work on this, these two. One team can work on these two. One team can work on these two. Okay. So what you can do is adopt a generic model of the sun sensor and complete your design, the filter design. Once the sun sensor has been designed and developed by your teammates or your other teammates change that model and put it in and see how what the accuracy is okay you see that so you can you can complement each other and if you if you and what you can do is if the design if this estimation says the accuracy you're getting is not is not enough you go back and redesign the sun sensors make it try to make it more accurate you see that you can uh, you can interact, you can interplay, and figure out uh, what you want to do. What else are we looking at? So we have looked at Thank you. 